So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, in your notes last class period, for those of you that were not here, we talked about the um, reciprocal function. Reciprocal function is y equals 1 over x. And that graph looks something like this. Do -do -do -do. Okay, it had a horizontal asymptote and it had a vertical asymptote. Okay, now that was the that's what we call the parent graph, and I'd recommend for all of the graphs that we discussed so far in this course, absolute value, quadratics, cubic, um, radical, rational. What we're doing now, logarithmic, exponential, that you guys understand what the parent graph looks like, understand what the shape is, sine and cosine, tangent. You should all know what those parent graphs look like because the transformations is about the same thing for every single one. A, remember, is basically going to be doing our compression or stretching. And if A is negative, that's reflecting about the x-axis, right? And that's true for quadratics. That's true for all of, our all of our functions. Where C and D, remember, if you're, since this is, I'm subtracting C inside the function, remember, anytime you're subtracting or adding inside the function, that's shifting it left or right. And adding and subtracting outside the function is shifting it up or down. That's true for all of our families of functions, correct? We just have a different graph here. So if you look at this, um, basically what I do is just look at, uh, I like to write down the transformations. So I can see this one has a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch of 4. And I, that's a negative. It could be the numerator or denominator. But I can see that's a reflection of the x-axis. Okay, So all I'm doing is basically stretching the graph and then reflecting it about the x-axis. So if here's what the original graph looks like, all I'm doing now is reflecting it about the x-axis and kind of putting a little bit of stretch on there. So just kind of putting a little stretch, and then therefore that would be the graph, what a graph would look like. Um, however, that's not the only question they said. They said, identify the x and the y intercepts. Now, hopefully you guys can see, does this graph cross the x and the y axis? No. no. So we know there is no x and y intercept, right? However, for all of our families of functions, we should know how to find the x and the y intercepts. To find the x intercept, y is equal to 0. So I'm going to show you algebraically why we know there's no y-intercepts. If you put 0 in for y, you get negative 4 over x. Well, we got to solve for x to find the x-intercept. So you multiply by x on both sides. And what you get is 0 is equal to negative 4. Well, 0 does not equal negative 4. So therefore, there's no x-intercept. To find the y-intercept for any equation, it doesn't matter what the function is or equation. To find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 in for x and solve for y. So when we go ahead and do that, we get y equals negative 4 over 0. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that anything divided by 0 is undefined. So therefore, you can't have an undefined intercept. So there's no y-intercept either, which we know from graphically, we know there's no y-intercept. Right or x-intercept. Does everybody make sense of that? Um, then it says also state the domain and the range. Now remember, the domain is a set of all x values that make up the graph. Well, for a parabola, that was pretty obvious. The graph just kept on, kept on expanding, right? Well, for here, let's go ahead and take a look at it. From here, the graph goes to negative infinity. And then how far does it go? And then it keeps on going from negative infinity, it goes all the way over here, but then it starts going up, right? So it's going really fast to the right, but then it starts slowly going to the right, right? And it doesn't go, it goes all the way to the right, but then it doesn't really go past what value? Zero. zero. So we say the domain is from negative infinity to a zero. Then on the other side of zero, it starts going to the right, 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 all the way to infinity. So we'd say the domain is from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. Well, both of those are a part of our domain, so we'd use union. So the big U would be union together. Yes? OK, say like the question was um, graph or graphic. And like, how would you graph the vertical stretch like exactly? Like, you I don't need to worry about it. I, it. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously when we do graphing technology, that would be something that would be more important. You're not going to 
be judged on your stretching of the graph for this. Obviously, a parabola, we know, you know vertical stretch is going to make it skinnier. For this one, I wouldn't just understand that it's a ver still a vertical stretch as far as that. Yes? So what's your mean? Did you just say R in the base of that? Like I'm going to write it that way next. Okay. I just want you guys to understand the test might only show domain looking like this. So I just want to present it to you. That's a different way of writing the domain. I mean, just it, you're just sketching it. It doesn't need to be exact.